Assalamu alaikum wa my name is John Fontaine and welcome back to the final episode of The Fiqh of Love. Today we're joined with Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, akhi. Shaykh, subhanAllah, it's been a very important, eventful and enlightening serious series, I should say. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah, and it's been very serious as well. SubhanAllah. To a great Espe extent. <laughs> yeah, especially the last few episodes, SubhanAllah, mm -hmm. we're speaking about divorce at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to continue this topic uh, of divorce. Uh, last week we were speaking about talaq and I wanted to carry on with that. And I have a question actually regarding uh, the divorce when it's initiated by the man. What happens if he has divorced the woman three times? Is it possible that he can marry her again? Well, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If you remember in the last episode we referred to ayah number 229, chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, in which Allah the Almighty put some limitations to divorce. Because before Islam, a man would divorce his wife once, 10 times, 20 times, 100 times, and before the term is over, he would say, I took you back. I took you back. So he's neither treating her as a wife, giving her rights as a wife, nor is he letting her go. That's why the Almighty Allah said, maratan, only twice. Mm -hmm. You have the right to take her back only twice if you divorce her. Mm -hmm. Then, after you divorce her, if you decide to keep her, you keep her with honor and dignity. You treat her kind. But if you decide to let go and the divorce is complete and the term is over and you did not take her back, then sh that should be done also with kindness. أو تسريح بإحسان. Then, ولا يحل لكم أن تأخذوا مما آتيتموهن شيئا. So even if you've given them any dowry or whatever, because you're the one who divorced them, you, they keep everything. The following ayah says, فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدُ حَتَّى تَنْكِحَ زَوْجًا غَيْرًا So we said Allah the Almighty limited the number of divorces to two because the third one is unlike the first and the second. After the first, after the second, you still may take her back and she must stay in the same house in which you and her will live in together. يا أيها النبي إذا طلقتم النساء فطلقوهن لعدتهن وأحصل عدة واتقوا الله ربكم لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن. You should not force them out of their houses. That is after the first and the second divorce. That is the first ayah of سورة الطلاق or divorce chapter. ولا يخرجن. Even if she wants to leave, she wants to live with her family or whatever. No, both of you, you must stay together in the same house. But if he divorced her for the third time, then one of them has to move out because they're not husband and wife anymore. Nor can they remarry anymore, not unless. فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا Ayah number 230 of Surah Al-Baqarah If he happened to divorce her now the third time, فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِن بَعْدُ She cannot marry him because she's not lawful for him. حَتْ not until she marries somebody else. And this marriage must not be something like a setup. Mm. I'm just marrying this person on papers. You know how people marry on yeah. papers in order to get the residency? Yeah. So some people marry on papers in order to say, well, she's married already, now divorce her. But Allah Next knows day. what's in your heart when you do no, this. No, that is not yeah. permissible. Because something happened like that in the Prophet Sallallahu time and he said, No, no this marriage is invalid and it will not validate marriage for the first ex-husband. Not until they have complete sexual intercourse. I'm talking about the second marriage. Yeah. So the ayah says, Without arrangement. Basically, the man divorced his wife three times, and the idda also must be kept in mind. The three quru, or if she doesn't experience the period, then three lunar months mm. have elapsed, and the term is over. Now she's looking for a husband. She met the right guy, alhamdulillah, and they got married. Mm. Guess what? Things did not work out, and he divorced her. 
Same setup like before. He has two divorces and the third is final and irrevocable. But when he divorced her the first time, he didn't take her back. Aida is over. Oh, her first ex-husband showed interest. And she said, you know what? Because we have kids, I would love to remarry him. Can they remarry? Yes, as long as they did not set up mm. and arrange mm. the second marriage on papers in order to make it legitimate for the first mm. ex-husband to marry her. Sheikh, what if somebody was to divorce before consummating the marriage? What would happen with... I'll be happy to answer your question, inshallah. I want to ask you something. Whatever we spoke about earlier sounds and looks very complicated, especially after the third divorce, mm. correct? Yes. It is complicated. You know why? Because Allah give you concession, give you authority. You misuse it, you lose it. Mm. You abuse the power of divorce, then you lose your wife. You mm. lose your kids and now somebody else is, uh, is raising your kids. Mm. Think before you act. Mm. Think twice, try so many mm. times before you actually say to your wife mm. you're divorced or send her a message threatening her, you're divorced. You I turn mean, around and you say, well, I didn't mean it. I was mm. threatening her. I mean, this all go also goes both ways, Sheikh. You know, the woman needs to think about it as well. We said Allah gave her the benefit of doubt, and that's yeah. why he gave the authority of saying yeah. divorce to the man, yeah. but he abuses it, yeah. okay? He warned her. He said, never ask for divorce unless if it is something serious. Mm. But if she does, yeah, she's blameworthy. But you're wise enough, you're powerful enough not to give her divorce now, to mm. wait. If it is during the period, okay, honey, inshallah, in a few days, mm. you know, and you hang around and things will improve, things will get better. Then you explain to her what you said before when you were angry is haram. And you too, whenever you're angry, make wudu or step mm. out of the house or change your position because it's only twice. Mm. You make a mistake and you say talaq once, then another incident, you say talaq mm. and it's over. Mm. And you have a bunch of kids. Mm. Well, she's going to marry somebody mm. else. So, Sheikh, regarding uh, the marriage, you know, divorcing before the consummation of the marriage. Well, the... Uh, verdict that you're referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is no blame upon you if you decided to divorce your wives before you consummate the marriage من قبل أن تمسوهن before you have المس here refers to not mere touch it refers to consummating the marriage طيب what if you did so وقد فرضتم لهن فريضة and you have already appointed or allocated or you name the dowry. Either you already paid the dowry fully upfront, or there was a deferred amount. In this case, فَنِصْفُ مَا فَرَضْتُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ يَعْفُونَ أَوْ يَعْفُوَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ عُقْدَةُ النِّكَاحِ So half the dowry becomes her right, and the other half goes to the man who divorced her as long as they did not consummate the marriage. Mm. We said before the consummation is actually official when they lock the door behind them in a private place, even if there is no actual in our course. So if they get married and they, on the papers, they got the marriage contract done, mm -hmm. but they, they never consummated the marriage. She never moved them and things didn't work out and he divorced her. Thank you so much. Here is 50% of the dowry. Well, I give you 100,000. Here is 50 thousand unless if the wife who was supposed to be uh, you know a permanent wife but now it didn't work out if she foregoes if she remits and forgives and she says you know what since mm. we didn't get married here is the whole dowry thank you so much or the guardian says son you're like my son Alhamdulillah, that it didn't work out from the beginning, mm. and here is your full dowry. That's very nice mm. of you. No hurt feeling. بينكم, and don't you forget the graciousness between you guys. Remember when you proposed to her, and you were very sweet and kind. Remember when they received you as you were proposing 
to their daughter. Mm. So remember how you were treating mm. each other with graciousness and kindness. Mm. So it's better to pardon. But mm. officially, if you divorce your wife, after the marriage contract and before consummating the marriage, it is legally her right to keep 50% of the dowry. Mm. If you didn't pay anything yet, you still owe the deferred mm. amount. Sheikh, it, concerning the Maha, you know when the case has been taken to a judge and the marriage has been annulled, so what happens to the dowry in this instance? You mean if the wife demanded divorce or in the case of separation? In the case of separation. Because you said there's something mm. called divorce, yes. something called fasha, and fasha, there is yeah. something called khula. Mm. Divorce is the right of the husband, mm. and the wife may request that if she has a legitimate reason and the man understands. Fasha, if he is stubborn, if he's giving her a hard time, if he's leaving her neither a wife nor a free woman, so she takes her case to the judge mm. or to the imam if you are in a Muslim community in, in, in the West. And then we present the case and she says that the guy is hurting me. The guy is beating me badly. The guy doesn't support me financially. Mm. The man curses me and my family. The guy drinks. The mm. guy doesn't pray, etc. So the judge would call him. If he shows up, he investigates the case. Do you really do that? You don't pay her any money? You mm. curse her parents? You're abusive if he admits? So what do you want? I don't want him anymore. Fasq. So he says, why don't you divorce her? No, I'm not going to divorce her. Even mm. if you don't want to divorce her. The judge has the power of divorcing them or mm. separating them. And that becomes irrevocable. Okay. okay? That becomes irrevocable. Even if he wants to take her back, that would require a new marriage contract if she agrees, mm. and a new dowry, of course, and the consent of the guardian. That's called fasq. The judge is authoritative, and he's having the right to cause the separation based on his judgment. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. We're just going to take a short break. Make sure you join us after the break. We'll be, we'll be back in a few minutes. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam, John wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we've been discussing the, the, the details regarding the divorce when sadly it, might, it doesn't always work out in marriage. Mm. And we've gone into a lot of detail regarding the talaq, which is initiated by the, the man or the groom. The husband. The husband, yeah. He's not a groom not anymore. Not a groom anymore. <laughs> we might also be... <laughs> And then you also have the separation, which it maybe has been given by the judge. Uh, the judge. Okay. Now, Sheikh, I want to ask you about the divorce, which is initiated by the woman, the khula. Yeah, that is the third type of separation, mm. which if the husband is not given divorce, and that is causing harm to her, and um, the wife finds it impossible to continue with this man. So if you remember in the ayah in which Allah said at talaq maratan, that is the same ayah 229 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, it is not permissible for you to take anything as far as money or dowry mm. of what you've given them before. إِلَّا أَنْ يَخَافَ أَلَّا يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا فِي مَفْتَدَتْ بِهِ in simple English, Allah the Almighty says the only condition where it's permissible for the husband to recall or to collect either the full dowry that he paid before or some of the dowry is in case that life is impossible between of, uh, both of them. He doesn't want to give divorce and uh, she's afraid that she will be committing a big sin and uh, she's not really living with him as a husband and wife. Mm. She, her mind is somewhere else. She thinks this guy, even if he's good, as far as a religious person, nice person, but she finds it impossible to live with him. She's afraid that she's not going to keep within the boundaries of Allah, the ahkam and the rules of Allah. So she initiates the request of separation. Mm. Not divorce, separation. Mm. She says, 
Look, man, I know you've paid that much or whatever. I cannot live with you. Mm. Why don't you take whatever you paid me as dowry and just let me go? If he says, okay, no harm, that's a win-win situation. Mm. If he doesn't, then we'll go to the judge. So the judge would ask her, when she comes to the imam, why do you want to initiate separation? Well, I don't like him. I feel like I hate him. I never expected, but is he bad? Does he beat you? Because we can make separation, you know, mm -hmm. and in this case, you keep the dowry. No, 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 no. He's super nice, but somehow I, I, I cannot accept him. When I see him, I feel like, you know, I'm afraid of him. Mm -hmm. Literally, I hate mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. I don't want him as a husband. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind compared to a hadith which I mentioned earlier in a previous episode. In which the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, If a woman who's married asks for divorce without a valid reason, then mm. she will not find the fragrance of paradise. So what is the difference between the, this hadith and the khul'a case? Let me tell you the difference from the sunnah and why khul'a. While it's mentioned in ayah number 229, like uh, referred to, and then it is explained fully in this reference, which is collected by Imam Bukhari and narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. He said, a woman of a companion by the name Thabit ibn Qais, radiyallahu an. This companion was a good man and a righteous companion. Okay? Being righteous, being good, being super religious does not mean that uh, you're also looking nice or handsome mm -hmm. or tall or you're a movie star. You're any person, but you are before Allah the best. Mm -hmm. Allah says, in akramakum indallahi atqakum. So the complexion, the height, the color of the eyes, the hair blonde or black, curly or smooth, or you're even bald, all of that doesn't matter, doesn't count. Mm -hmm. What counts is righteousness. But for the woman, mm. also she needs a handsome man. Mm. She wants a man when she sees him, mm. she feels like she's lucky. She's the luckiest. She wants to go out in the mall or in the park, she put in her hand, in his hand, and she's proud that he's my husband. He's my husband. So she was married to this kind of Sahabi who is great as far as goodness, righteousness. Mm. But she did not like him because of his look. And because of whenever he comes among other men, she finds him the least as far as the nice look, the height, and so on. So she feared that she would be committing a sin. She went to the Prophet وسلم, and she said, O Prophet of Allah, إني أخشى الكفر في الإسلام. I'm afraid to commit an act which will be perceived as disbelief while I've accepted Islam. Why are you saying that? My husband, Thabit ibn Qais, I do not criticize anything in respect of his deen or his akhlaq. He's, he's super nice, he's religious. I don't like him. Oh, khalas, the Prophet وسلم, und understood what she means. Mm. So he says, وسلم, but he paid you a big dowry, hadiqa, you know how many day palm trees we have here? Mm. A few, maybe ten. He paid her a garden full of dead palm trees. That's plenty of wealth. Would you give him back the dowry that he gave you? The garden? She said, of course, yes. And you know that it means, that by itself means that she was willing to get out by any price. Mm. Under any cost. So the Prophet ﷺ said, okay. Then he called Thabit ibn Qais. He said, Ya Thabit, talliqha talqa waqbal hadiqatak. Let her go and take back your garden. He didn't want to. He mm. loved her. But she did not like him. Mm. We spoke in the beginning of the program about love. And we said Islam recognizes love. And mm. marriage is about love. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً These are the two main pillars of marriage. If not compassion, then uh, mercy. Mm. But if both of them, like you blocked, mm. you know, you're seeing the person in front mm. of you, something else, not a human being, mm. not a nice husband whom you desire. You hated him, mm. even if he's good. 
to others mm -hmm. but to you you cannot live with him Khalas. you can offer him the whole dowry or a part of the dowry or mm -hmm. more or less subhanallah Shaykh. you know often divorce is looked at, looked at in a way that is always bad or negative but in fact in some some circumstances it can also be a mercy as well subhanallah if you look at other religions you know like we mentioned christianity it, it doesn't give the in catholicism and doesn't give men or women yeah. the right uh, to and divorce. that led to some husbands killing their wives mm -hmm. or vice versa yeah. and but now for 1400 years ago islam gave men and women the right to be with the one that they love subhanallah exactly exactly absolutely beautiful wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajan litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala baynakum mawaddatan wa rahma inna fi dhalika la ayatin liqawmin yatafakkarun among his signs, there were a few verses in chapter number 30, Surah al Rum, discussing how Allah created us from dirt, from dust. Then He made us into nation tribes. This is an ayah. How our mother tongues and complexions are very diverse, and how He created for us from among ourselves spouses, mm. your wife and my wife, and why? In order to have fun, in order to enjoy your life, in order to experience that peace of mind to have comfort so when you go home you're entering your comfort zone you feel peace you feel joy and delight mm -hmm. and for that the components the mm -hmm. ingredients of the recipe of joy and delight of repose and rest is mawadda wa rahma two main poles compassion and mercy mm -hmm. if they do not exist mm -hmm. then ma salama Goodbye. Find somebody else. SubhanAllah, Shaykh. Shaykh, we're coming towards the end of this series. And SubhanAllah, it's been a very fantastic series. We've, we've learned so much you know, about love uh, from the Islamic perspective, love and marriage and divorce. It's been really eye-opening. And I'm sure many people have benefited so much. And uh, Shaykh, have you got any last bits of advice you can give? And also, uh, maybe we can, uh, are there any points that you want to elaborate on? Sure. Uh, One know, thing. Just before we finish. One thing before we finish. You know, some people may end up watching just the last episode. Some mm. people may end up just watching the rights of the husband. Mm. They love it and they forget that there are two episodes talking about the rights of the wife. And some sisters may watch two episodes of the rights of the wife and they do not get to watch the rights of the husband. That's not fair. وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Equal rights and duties, mutual rights and duties. Also, when a man came to Umar ibn Khattab and uh, he was telling them he's going to divorce his wife. He said, why? He said, because I don't love her anymore. He beat him up <laughs> and said, you're a loser. So you're divorcing your wife just because you don't love her anymore? Don't you have kids? Don't you do things together? There are many, many things. In the ayah which prescribed divorce, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَىٰ أَنْ تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا It may be that you dislike something while Allah makes, keeps, and puts in that thing which you hated plenty of goodness. Mm. So keep trying, especially when you have kids, even mm. if it is just one child mm. you know being unfair to many of our children due to divorce mm. sometimes a wife would say you know what that's okay i don't want anything from you just let me live in a separate flat you can go ahead and marry and enjoy your life but let me raise my kids and when i go to the school they ask my kid where is your dad so your dad is here mm. we can go together only for certain occasions mm. i don't want you to divorce me so when she gives up some of her rights, for the sake of what? Mm. For the sake of the children. Mm. Keep in mind that it is not about just you or her. Mm. It's about also the future generation, mm. your children and your offspring, mm. whom are also responsible to look after. One should shoulder his or her responsibilities. SubhanAllah, Sheikh. It's very, very nice and... Uh, it's been an amazing series, subhanAllah. I'm sure many people have got so much benefit. I hope so. Yeah, and... Um, and you know what, I hope you so. You know, I think what you said oh, there... Sorry. You know what, what, yeah. what I really hope it will benefit us 
personally you and mm. I most first inshallah because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blame those who teach people goodness and they do otherwise yes. or they do not act upon it لما تقولون ما لا تفعلون so we hope and pray uh, by the end we're human beings whenever we were quoting the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he yeah. was the best to his uh, family or his wife mm. he was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes. we are trying to imitate him and copy him but mm. we're still human beings subhanallah shaykh shaykh have you got any last final words which you'd like to of course point towards the people if there is last word i would say keep making dua and ask your wife to make dua what dua the dua which we discussed in the very first episode the supplication that the servants of Ar-Rahman they supplicate on a regular basis they say Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yunin waj'alna lil muttaqina imama dua achieves miracles and makes the impossible possible our Lord grant us from our spouses and our offspring qurrata a'yun comfort for our eyes peace for our mind and make us leaders for the pious ones Amen. Jazakallah Khair Sheikh that's an amazing dua to finish on and I'd like to thank you so much for joining us and you know going through this whole series and uh, we've been through all May Allah the... accept Amen, Amen. and hopefully inshallah maybe we can do more series about different topics in the future which can benefit the Ummah inshallah Jazakallah Khair Sheikh SubhanAllah it's been an amazing series Zana thank you for joining us thank you thank you for hosting me and that's all we have time for with the Fiqh of Love. I hope you got lots of benefit throughout this whole series. I'm sure I did. And that's all we have time for. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.